Hey my dear Dirty friends, it's Nicola from Day to Mozart. In this video you'll learn all the things you need to know about direct query in Power BI. We'll first discuss what is a direct query, in which scenarios to use it, and why you should think twice before you choose to go this way. Yeah, you will also learn about best practices for direct query, and what you should, and even more important, should not do when using direct query. Stay tuned as we are ready to kick it off. When working with Power BI, one of the first decisions you need to make is to choose Data Connectivity Mode. In this video I want to go more in depth on the Direct Query option, as I have a feeling that this option is still underused. For good or for bad, we'll try to examine in the next 10 minutes. So what is a Direct Query? As its name suggests, Direct Query is a method of retrieving data that pulls the data directly from the data source at the query time. The last part of the sentence holds the key while import mode stores the snapshot of your data in memory. Direct query doesn't store any data. For every single request, it goes straight to the data source, which is in 99% of cases SQL database, and pulls the data from there. So data resides within its original source before, during and after the query execution. When interacting with the report, your users generate a query, or set of queries in most cases, that needs to be executed in order to satisfy the request. Tabular model consists of Formula Engine and Storage Engine. Formula Engine accepts the request, creates a query plan and then, depending on your choice between import versus direct query mode, generates the query to target respective data source. When you choose the direct query option, Formula Engine will translate DAX to a SQL and send the query directly to the data source. Once you've chosen the direct query option, Power BI will not import data from the underlying tables, it will hold only their metadata. When to use a direct query? Honestly, this is a million dollar question, and as in most cases the only correct answer is, it depends. But let's check on what it depends. To make it simple, you should use direct query mode in three, and literally three scenarios. Is your data model size big? And when I say big, I mean really big. So big that you can't accommodate it within a maximum PBX file size, which is 1 GB for Pro license or 10 GB for Premium Embedded license. Let's imagine that your users need to analyze data, data from a billion row table, on a low level of granularity. You can't simply import billion row table into the tabular model. On the opposite, data stays in the source and your aggregations and calculations are being performed there before the refined results are being returned to your report. Do you need real-time or near real-time data? If your answer to any of these questions were yes, you should consider using direct query mode. Why? Because import mode keeps the snapshot of your data, and this snapshot needs to be refreshed periodically in order to get the latest data. In case you need, for example, data with a maximum 1 minute latency using import mode is practically impossible. However, don't fall into the trap if your users request real-time data. Explain them all the downsides of using direct query mode. From my experience, in 99% of cases, the users will admit that maybe they don't really need real-time data. Number 3. Security policies are defined on the data source side as report consumers' credentials will be propagated to the underlying data source and security rules apply there. The most important consideration when using direct query is that overall user experience depends almost, almost exclusively on the performance of the underlying data source. That means, if your source database is not optimized for the analytic workload, things like missing indexes, inappropriate indexes, inadequate data modeling in place, so that query needs to target multiple tables, your report performance will suck. Additionally, the number of users that interact with the report in parallel will also have an impact. Imagine the scenario where 10 people browsing the report page with 20 visuals on it. That will generate 200 queries to an underlying data source at the same time. Keep in mind that each visual will generate at least one query to a data source. And if there is a realistic chance that you can improve those two by applying different techniques, 
you should also keep in mind that there are also some things that you can't control, such as performance of the source server. You can't do anything if, for example, tens of different workloads are being run during the visuals refresh on that same server. Also, network latency is another thing that you can't control. There are different techniques to improve the performance of the data source, assuming that you have access and permissions to an underlying data source so you can apply structural changes. First one is adding proper indexes uh, to support your most exhaustive queries. You should consider creating column store indexes for large analytical workloads, but well-designed B3 indexes should also improve the performance. Talk to your DBA and ask him for help. Next one, data integrity in place. Ensure that your dimension tables contain proper keys and that those keys relate to a fact table. So every fact table key value has a corresponding value in the dimension table. Finally, create persistent objects in the source database. That means try to materialize all aggregations, transformations and calculations either in a special table or in an indexed view. That way Power BI can retrieve all data from a single place instead of performing complex operations like joins between multiple tables every time queries being executed. Here is the list of the things you should try to avoid. First, avoid complex Power Query transformations. Each time you apply a transformation to your data model, Power Query will generate a query and fire it to your source database. If you need to use calculated columns, try to push their creation on the source database and keep them persistent. Avoid complex DAX measures. As your DAX statement needs to be translated to a SQL, keep in mind that this process can produce expensive SQL queries. Again, whenever possible, perform all your calculations on the source side. Avoid relationships on GUID columns, unique identifier columns. Power BI doesn't support this data type and needs to, apply it, uh, needs to apply some internal data conversion during the query execution, which will obviously affect the performance. The solution here is to convert this data type within the source database prior to Power BI generates its own queries. Limit parallelism whenever possible. You can define the maximum number of connections that direct query can open at the same time. And let me show you how it's done in Power BI Desktop. So if we go to File tab and Options and Settings, under Options, let's wait a few seconds. If I go to Current File and this option Publish Dataset Settings, you see this maximum connections per data source. By default it's 10 and you can manually change this value here and change the number of maximum connections. Once in the Power BI report itself, there are a few additional optimization options. Again, I will go to Options and Settings and basically you can restrict slicers and filters because by default when you change one slicer value all the slicers will generate the query to a data source even those which haven't changed so if i go to query reduction option here i can select for slicers add and apply button to each slicer to apply changes when you are ready and if i click to ok and go back to my report you see all those buttons on, uh, below each of my slicers so therefore you can add the apply button set so that the user can specifically choose which portion of data needs to be refreshed. Of course, that will impact your report design since you need to provide additional space for those buttons. Finally, you should, you should check the assume referential integrity option. How do you do this? If I right click on the relationship between my dimension table and fact table under properties, here you see this option assume, assume referential integrity. This option, checking this option will enable the usage of inner joins instead of outer joins, which in theory can improve the overall query performance. Of course, as a prerequisite, you should have referential integrity in place within your source database. One more recommendation is of key importance. Talk to your users, try to explain them the difference between import mode and direct query mode. What benefits can they get by using each of these two, but also which downsides to expect, especially when choosing direct query mode. To conclude, the best practice regarding direct query storage mode is avoid direct queries if possible. That's all folks, thanks for watching. In case you find this video useful, hit that like button down below. 
Also, feel free to subscribe to Data Mozart channel and enjoy more Power BI and data related videos. Until next time, enjoy Power BI!